talking about why so many of us push love away and why so many of us find ourselves like being afraid to love. You know, we go through all this trouble to manifest the right relationship and then before you know it, fear consumes us. If you love learning about personal development, how you can make the best out of your life, healing from codependency and narcissistic abuse, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. Okay, so let's unpack this, right? So you want a relationship, you manifest a relationship, and then what happens? Before long, you're worrying about this person cheating on you. You're worried about where this person is. This distrust begins to settle in. And before long, you know, all of these wonderful feelings that you had about this person begin to be replaced by fear. And this is really common. I've experienced it myself. It took me a while to unpack it, but I think I finally figured out what it is. When we have this undercurrent of I am not enough, it's an innate subconscious program. I'm not enough. I don't trust that I'm lovable. There's something wrong with me. You see, if you come from a dysfunctional family, or if you came from a family that looked functional, but somehow, you know, in the mix, you grew up feeling invisible, or you grew up feeling not enough, if you suffered childhood emotional neglect, if you had parents who were addicts, who were narcissistic, if you grew up in a home where things were unpredictable, if you grew up feeling like the who you were was unlovable, how does a child perceive themselves as unlovable? Well, it's very easy, unfortunately, to make a child feel unlovable, and that is just don't pay attention to them. Assume they're, that they're okay. Don't check in with them. Don't ask them how they feel. When parents aren't attuned to their children, there's a disconnect. And children assume that this disconnect, right, is their fault because children are subjective thinkers. So let's say you grew up feeling not good enough, like so many of us do. And you have this undercurrent, this identity of yourself that you are unworthy, that you um, there's something innately wrong with you. I hear this a lot inside my 12-week breakthrough coaching program. I hear it a lot from YouTube viewers, like, I always felt like I was broken. Relationships just never worked out for me. And I don't know why my relationships never work out for me. And then after working with someone, what we discover is that there is this true undercurrent that I am not enough and I am unlovable. So what happens with the mind is the mind has to prove your reality right. So you manifest someone and everything's great in the beginning and before long you're not trusting this person and this person if you ask this person like you know how they felt about you they would say fine like I don't see a problem in our relationship like I don't know what's up and I'm not talking about a narcissistic person I'm not so talking about somebody who's love avoidant I'm talking about somebody who is generally okay in the relationship but you feel like things aren't okay but there's no evidence to why you feel like things aren't okay so it's, it's a battle within yourself that you're struggling with and you don't know what it is. Now there is also, there, there are the um, chances in life where you manifest someone in the beginning and it turns out that you're just not a good fit. I'm not even talking about that. What I'm talking about is when we self-sabotage our happiness, when we are in experiences with people and they start off fine and before long we are sabotaging our own life. We have to understand, and that's why I harp on all the time, you have to love yourself, right? It is the basis for everything. It will determine what career you go into. It will determine the quality of your relationships. It will determine what type of a parent that you become, what kind of friend you are, what type of lover you are, what type of spouse you are. It will determine what type of human being you become, which is all moldable. Because once you change your reality, you can change anything and everything that you desire with enough conscious effort. That's the key. You have to be awakened and you have to apply conscious effort. When you feel like you are not good enough, when you are somebody who doesn't feel good enough unless you're getting praised, when you feel like you're not good enough unless you're getting attention, when you feel like you're not good enough, unless there's someone outside of you saying, oh yes, you're good enough, oh yes, you're good enough. When you feel like that person, what's happened to you is that you on an innate le level have failed to become self-actualized, you have failed to 
um, develop full self-esteem, meaning I am competent. Even if things go wrong, I'll be able to fix them. You are not somebody who believes that your sense of self is not tied to something outside of you. And so you struggle with the true sense of I am enoughness. When you manifest a relationship, when you manifest a love relationship, or you manifest friendships, and you know, you're laying in bed at three o'clock in the morning and you feel unworthy, then you project that unworthiness onto the other person because you don't think that you're worthy of being loved. There's there's this undercurrent of I'm not enough. And so your mind has to come up with some rationalization to prove yourself right. So what you'll end up doing is you start picking on your partner. There has partner. to be something wrong with my partner. If my partner is telling me, he loves me, and I know that I'm not lovable. There has to be something wrong with my friend if she's telling me that I'm lovable and I don't believe that I'm lovable. So my brain must argue, right, to resolve this conflict. How could you say you love me if I'm unworthy? It makes no sense to me. And so to resolve that conflict, I have, well, I have anxiety, I have tension, it doesn't feel right. You know, accepting your love doesn't feel right. Feeling unlovable feels about right. It's what I'm used to, it's my norm. And so when we do not love ourselves, when we have been wounded, when we come from narcissistic homes or abusive homes, alcoholic homes, homes that were unpredictable, when we come from foster homes, when we have been moved about, when we have suffered child emotional neglect and various forms, forms of abuse, when we ha suffer from complex PTSD, we have to really, 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 really be very introspective and try to figure out, do I really believe that I am worthy of love? Do I believe that I have innate value, right? I just had a quick conversation um, with my godson and told him that the goal really is to believe yourself worthy just as you are for the essence that you are, not because you do, not because you have, not because you look a certain way. And that's really hard because we live in a 3D reality that to me is like this giant ruler, like everywhere you look is a ruler. You know, there's somebody who says you're not thin enough. There's someone who says that you're not pretty enough. You're not young enough. You don't make enough money. You're not funny enough. You're not intelligent enough. You're not interesting enough, right? This all is I'm not enough stuff. You know, um, so many parents struggle with their own self-esteem and parents who have low self-esteem, how do you have a child? How can you help a child develop a true sense of self-esteem if you struggle with self-esteem? It's nearly impossible. You know, it's so important that parents heal their own wounds from childhood so that they can help their children feel enough. And so how you make your child feel enough is by you making sure that you know that you're enough and you work on self-love, you work on self-healing, you work on, to me, healing from codependency is what saved me. Recognizing that I came from a, a home with two unrecovered adult children of alcoholics saved me. Recognizing narcissism saved me. Recognizing how insecure I was, how reactive I was, how codependent I was, what a people pleaser I was, and how angry I was because I was a people pleaser, you know? Um, and this all helped me develop the ability to observe myself and essentially work on healing myself. But it's really important that if you struggle with, I am not enough and I am unlovable, you have to understand that your relationships are going to suffer and it might not be your partner's fault. It might not be your best friend's fault. If you do not think that you are enough, you know, in the beginning of a relationship, it might be fine while you're, while you're getting this person to like, you know, uh, hang with you, while you're getting this person to like be with you. But once you secure this person, the doubts are gonna kick in because you don't feel enough. And you'll think that there's something wrong with your partner. You'll, you won't believe that your partners, when they say, I love you, because in your head, you're unlovable. Below the veil of consciousness, you're struggling with, I'm not enough, right? And so it won't make sense to you when your partner says, I love you. It won't make sense, the kindness won't make sense. There'll always be this level of distrust. Now, I think it's really important to recognize that that's not your fault. And I think it's really important to recognize that something went wrong early on in childhood when you should have developed trust in people versus distrust, right? You should have been able to learn that you were enough and you should have been able to trust 
that your needs would get met by competent authority figures in your life, i.e. your caretakers, you know, mom and dad or whoever raised you. That's how you develop a sense of I am, I am enough. This constant mirroring of, you know, um, validation, healthy validation from parents and caretakers and teachers, a community of people, right, which we're missing so much in our society today with, with um, the demands that are placed on families. So we're missing that. And so if there are any parents out there listening and you struggle with I am not enough stuff, it's time to figure out why. And it's time for you to start putting yourself first and really putting your healing first so that you can end this cycle, you know, within your own, within your own families, right? You have to learn, if you want to have, have a healthy marriage, you have to learn and believe that you're enough. Because if you don't believe that, when your partner tries to love you, you're going to reject it. It won't make sense to you because your brain has to prove you right. Dingbat, I'm not worthy. What are you talking about? You know, below the veil of consciousness. Dingbat, you don't love me. You can't love me because I'm unlovable. You see, that's the conflict that we have. But once we move to a place of, wait a minute, I am enough and I am lovable. I'm able to receive when you tell me that you love me because it makes sense. When I'm able to love myself, I'm able to receive love because it makes sense. When I'm able to recognize that I am lovable and I am worthy, I can receive love and I can give love. My name is Lisa Romano. I'm the Breakthrough Life Coach and creator of the 12 Week Breakthrough Coaching Program. This is an online coaching program that helps you uncover the subconscious beliefs that are keeping you stuck, codependent, and attracting narcissistic abuse into your life. I launch this class twice a year, and I'd love for you to check it out at www.lisaeromano.com backslash 12WBC. Hey, and if you're interested in jumping into some of my programs right here, right now, and joining me in my Facebook community, a private Facebook community, check out the Breakthrough Warriors membership site. Namaste, everybody. Until next time. Bye if you for love now. this content, check out the next video. And don't forget to click the link below so you can take the codependency quiz.